Just after 1.30 this afternoon, a police officer was taken to the hospital after responding to an unusual call here at the suites at Overton Park. 27 witnesses and six weeks later, both counsels have finished their closing arguments. The trial's over, but the jury still has work to do. They'll reconvene tomorrow at 8.30 in the morning. There are nearly 700 people out here in this line waiting to meet and get the signature of former Texas Tech coach Mike Leach. How long have you been out here? Since 445. A high speed chase on the interstate ended in one man dead and three people being sent to the hospital. Now police are telling us drugs and alcohol did play a part. Evan and Terry, his head fell into his hands today as he was shown pictures of him and his family reuniting the day he was released. Surprised and clearly upset by the thought of losing his electricity, a 74 year old man met the LPNL worker with a shotgun. We'll keep you updated as we receive more information. Reporting in North Lubbock, I'm Brittany Escobar, KLBK News. That's right, after only four hours of deliberation, the judge read the jury's verdict to an attentive courtroom. They are winners because they take my brother from there and the other people, another man. Alberto Cifuentes and Jesus Ramirez say they were wrongfully convicted for the murder of Evangelina Cruz. Now they're both suing law enforcement and prosecutors for $12 million each. We appreciate the opportunity to have a jury trial and to tell the truth, and so there's value in that. Unfortunate that they were sued, but of course they're fortunate to live in a country and in a community where we have uh, good, hardworking, and honest jurors. And the trial lasted six weeks, but only took the jury hours to side with the defense, granting Cifuentes and Ramirez nothing. I've, I've tried to, to live my career doing the right thing, and, and, and I, I, hopefully the jury verdict today showed that that's what I do. The main things I'd like to get out to, to the public is, is, in all this, don't forget Angie's family. This year marks the 15th anniversary of the murder, and Evangelina's sisters attended the trial to represent her memory. These are good people, these people that they sued, these are good people and they did their job and I don't think that people should be punished for doing their job. Everyone involved agrees saying a big burden has been lifted. It's a great uh, burden to carry the responsibility of proving a case for people who had clearly done nothing wrong. Glad that this trial has finally concluded and come to a very happy ending. We're very happy with the jury's verdict. Reporting from the Federal Building, I'm Brittany Escobar, KLBK News. Here in a few minutes, people will walk 15 blocks here down 19th Street and end on Avenue Q, all walking to stop victim blaming. The truth is the word slut is in everybody's daily vocabulary. Everybody uses it. Amanda Evans, a supporter of slut walks, says people should be aware of the way they use the term. When we're trying to call attention to its use and use it in an empowering um, situation, um, then all of a sudden people have a problem with it. Slut walks began in April as a reaction to a remark made by a Toronto law officer who said women should avoid dressing like sluts in order to not be victimized. <laughs> Over a hundred walks have taken place throughout the world. I think that sends a great message, you know, even in Lubbock, Texas, you have, you know, a hundred folks or more. You know, I still don't know what the final turnout's going to be. We're expecting about 100. Kenny Kettner, co-organizer of Lubbock Slut Walk, says the turnout surpassed their expectation with nearly 300 people walking. I feel like it's important for victims not to be blamed for what happens. Like, I've been a victim, and I know what it feels like to have people say, like, well, what were you doing? And that's irrelevant. Slut walkers began the walk with signs, chants, and strong voices. Ashley Duran, along with her family, says she walks for those who aren't yet ready to speak up. I'm a survivor of rape and sexual abuse, and I want my kids and my family growing up knowing that it's not okay and that we stand against it. I was 12, it's my rapist's fault, not mine. And his says, let's see yours, baby. Real men don't rape. And this one says, my mom is a survivor, not a slut. Duran shared her story with supporters after the walk. The question why am I here is to help those who are going through the pain that I know all too well. All walkers shared a common message for victims of sexual abuse. Society teaches, you know, don't get raped rather than don't rape. So that's a pretty important thing that we want to bring to everybody's attention. The bottom line is it's not your fault. This is the first slut walk in Lubbock and is part of an international movement. Reporting from Central Lubbock, I'm Brittany Escobar, MCTV News. And I never thought that would happen, you know, never thought that would happen. After being together for nearly four years, 29-year-old Tony Lusk says she wanted out of the relationship with her then-boyfriend, 42-year-old Mac Jenkins Jr., but he did not. You know, he wanted to talk. 
And I'm like, okay, cool, you know, I'm thinking he just wanted to talk, you know. The conversation quickly turned aggressive. But you don't want to be with me no more. And when I turned around, he was coming out of out his pocket out the uh, right side with a, a 22. You know, I come at him like this, boom, he shot me. And again, boom, he shoot again. It glazed me right here. And again, boom, it glazed me and hit me right here. Um, so I'm still running for my life, boom. That's when he paralyzed me. The bullet hit me right here in my spine. I still have the bullet in my spine. But Jenkins didn't stop there. You know, I'm begging by this time. I'm begging for my life. Boo! He hit me in my head. Lust says after being shot five times and being left for dead, Jenkins said his last words. The only thing that I heard before he shot himself was, you know, I loved you. Boo! You know, and he just fell right there next to me. Months later, Lusk is still receiving physical therapy. Now, she no longer lives in this house, but says she replays the events that happened here over and over in her mind and says it's time to stand up to domestic violence. Let him go. It doesn't matter if, if it's love there, you know. I mean, love can hurt you. Look what happened to me. Lust says she already has a walker and cane waiting for the day she's finally able to walk again. I'm still here, well alive and kicking. I hope to be walking within maybe two to three months. That's my goal. <laughs> Aquí en la Escuela Primaria de Roscoe Wilson, alumnos aprendan español en todos grados. Senón Cruz, un graduado de la Universidad de Texas Tech y sus estudiantes comienzan clase con el calendario. Cruz, el maestro de español, expresa qué importante es para los niños de hoy que aprendan español. De esta edad, es muy importante que los chicos aprendan español. Alumnos están consumidos en español tan pronto que entran la clase de Señor Cruz. Alrededor de la clase se encuentra el idioma de español con diferentes palabras. Cruz dice que trata de hacer planes creativos para que los alumnos quieran aprender el español para que sea segundo lenguaje. En esta edad se necesita uh, tomar las, los conceptos de español y, 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 darle, y, y dárselos este, en, un, en una manera que sea divertida. Él dice que le alegra observar a sus alumnos aprendiendo y practicando español. Reportando de la clase de Señor Cruz, yo soy Bernie Escobar.